All right, y'all. Let's talk. And also this angle is absolutely terrible, so let me fix that first. Okay, I think that's better. I think that's better. And let's also take off my silly socks. <laughs> because you know your girl is always cold. That's a given. I don't even know exactly what I want to say and if I'm not interrupted by outdoor noises then I could think of what to say. Let's get to the point of this video. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I literally, okay, you know what this should be coined? I literally feel like my life has just started but because of that, my life has just ended. And like, let, let let's get into that. And like, there's so there's so much here. Okay, there's so much. Let me explain where this is coming from. So, I just graduated in May. It is now the beginning of July, so it's been two months. It's been two months. I graduated. And there was so much going on, so like you, you've probably already seen this, but I went on a very long trip to Quebec. And then right after, like literally five days after that trip, I got back to Calgary. Uh, after I got back to Calgary, five days later, I go off on another trip to Peru, which was amazing. And then from there, I just got back to Calgary last week. Okay, which is when all of this started. Okay, and let me explain what this is. And also, we've got apple cider vinegar because your girl can't have kombucha right now. My eczema is starting to flare up and I'm honestly kind of scared to have yeast. So we're going to stay away from the kombucha and we're going to have my second drink of choice, which is apple cider vinegar. I could literally inhale this stuff a lot. So apple cider vinegar. Okay, that's our drink today. Now, I was expecting a withdrawal, I was, because I've gone on a few trips before and after every single trip I have withdrawals. Like for a week I feel quite frankly terrible. I feel very out of place and like I've lost something. I feel a lot of grief, if I'm going to be honest. I feel a lot of grief after trips. Um, it didn't happen to me after Quebec, and I'll get into why. But so I get back from this trip, and the withdrawals are so ridiculously bad. And I think it was mainly because I had a realization about myself. And it's an interesting realization because it's so contrary to the type of person that I am but it just makes sense so this is this is the idea that I came up with I think I'm actually very sensitive when it comes to letting people into my life and out of my life and that's because I'm very 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 particular and stringent with my time and energy like i'm extremely particular extremely particular i'm very like i'm very stingy and and very frugal what's the right word i'm very cheap with my time and energy like i have to be like I, i'm very 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 strict with it so and what i mean by that is i i control the stimulus around me a lot i control who i talk to how i talk to them where i talk to them when i talk to them I control everything so then when I go on trips like these where we go and have this amazing experience together and then we connect very deeply and we ask each other questions that you wouldn't ask normally or so suddenly or so quickly in a relationship you connect you become good friends and then you come back and you all go back to your lives which weren't connected to begin with and so like there's no interaction really anymore it's very, very jarring for a person like me who takes connection very, very seriously and, and is very 
what's the right word, intentional about the way she connects with people. It's very, very jarring for a person like me, extremely jarring. I'm extremely sensitive to that. And it makes so much sense because even though I'm so analytical and logical and unemotional, if you will, um, I feel that very, very, very deeply. And I feel the loss of those connections very, very, very deeply. Hence why, like I mentioned, when I came back from Quebec, I didn't feel these withdrawals because I was, I went by myself. I mainly did things there by myself. You know, I made a few good friends, but mainly did things by myself. And then I came back by myself and I was so happy to be back, you know, seeing my family, not having to cook 24 seven. Thank you, mom. I was so ridiculously happy to be back. But on the other trips that I've been on, which have always been with groups, I've always had withdrawals. And actually, let me let me fix that. One of the trips that I went on with a group, I didn't have withdrawals when I came back and I was extremely happy to be back. But that's because I didn't connect very well with the people on the trip. And to be frank, at the end, I was starting to get very, very annoyed and very, very dissociated. I, I, I'm very much dissociated from the people on the trip because we just didn't jive and we didn't have similar morals or values or the way we treat people and that kind of thing. So I was so happy to be back. But on the other trips that I've been with, with groups who I've connected very well with, I come back and I have these immense withdrawals. And I've never heard of this idea where you're literally having withdrawals from connections, but I literally feel the grief the, the loss of those connections very, very, very deeply, very deeply to the point where I did not, okay, TMI, but I did not change out of my pajamas until four days after, you know, got back Monday night, Tuesday morning, and I didn't change out of my pajamas, I think, until Friday morning, Friday afternoon, something like that. I have been keeping track of when I wake up, when I go to sleep, I've been very relaxed. It's been... <laughs> You know, that, that I was expecting, but then all of everything else comes like the, the existential crisis has been real. The existential crisis has been so real and I feel like someone is choking me. Like, I feel like I can, I feel like I'm between two walls and I do not know what to do. I do not know what to do. And I keep asking people and they're like, you know, you, you graduated, and yes, it's normal to feel an existential crisis. It's normal to feel like, what is life, and what am I doing with my life, which is how I feel. But then everyone goes like, oh, pick up a hobby. You know, this is the time to learn useful skills, if you will, if you're if you're taking time off, or you know, hunt for a job, or you know, go travel, and all of that jazz. And these are, you know, I'm I'm appreciative of the advice, but to be frank. I feel like I'm entertaining myself. Like honestly, I would literally just be entertaining myself. And I just, I'm not okay with that. Like I am not here to live a happy life. I'm not looking to entertain myself. I'm looking for a purposeful, meaningful, and driven life. That is what I'm looking for. That is why I'm having my existential crisis. I have hobbies. I have so much stuff I could get done. In in one of the things, the videos I will post after, you'll see me. Even now, I'm still on my laptop. Okay, there is stuff that I can do. But that that's not that's not what I'm looking to do. But I also don't know what I'm looking to do. And it is driving me absolutely insane. Can you tell it's driving me absolutely insane? It is driving me absolutely insane. Okay, apple cider vinegar break. I just feel very overwhelmed with the idea of having my entire life in front of me. Like I just spent five years and I should probably do a university reflection. I should probably do that and I will do that. It's been out the back of my head. I haven't done it yet. We will get to that. You know, just spent five years, a fulfilling five years at that, but now I have my entire life ahead of me and I'm like, okay, 
now what? And it's not that I get to decide. I just don't know what my options are. I don't know what I'm looking. Well, no, I kind of do know what I'm looking for. But like, I just keep thinking, this is it. Like, this is it. I don't know. I don't know. But then, <laughs> the nihilist in me comes out. Okay, this is where it gets kind of dark. Because the nihilist in me comes out and goes, well, does it have to be more? Why does it have to be more? Why can't life literally be lived day to day, mundanely, unexcitedly? Which I'm not promoting, by the way. I want to live an excited life. That's just the type of person I am. I want to live an adventurous, rich, purposeful life, like I said. Rich, though. Rich, adventurous adrenaline full you know your girl loves adrenaline okay but like why does it have to be that why can't it be boring why can't it be just this routine life i'm i don't that, and that's my other thing is i don't want a routine i don't want the same thing over and over every single day i don't want that but then i'm like why not why not does life really have to mean more does it really have to mean more? And that's the nihilistic thoughts, right? Like, why? And then you can hear my mom in the background, okay? Then you're surrounded with family. And it's like, trying to balance all of these things is making me go berserk. And you can hear the video that my mom is watching. Gotta love South Asian moms. But then I'm like, I'm a thinker, you know this. I'm an intellectual. I love saying that now. Uh, a good friend that I made on my Quebec trip called himself an intellectual. Cause I'd be like, well, why don't you just go do something about it? And you can hear my mom still in the background. Oh. <sighs> right, so I'd be like, well, why don't you do something about it? And he's like, well, I'm an intellectual. I'm a philosopher. Okay, and I'm like, you know what? I jive with that. I'm an intellectual. I'm a thinker thinker. I think a lot, which has been my problem because literally last week, up until yesterday, like I was not. No, this is the best I've felt since coming back from the trip. I was, I would literally just lay on my bed, think, sleep, eat, think, sleep, eat, because I am such a thinker. And sometimes you can get really overwhelmed by your thoughts and thinking really helps and thinking feels so good which is why you really just like end up just laying in bed all day long just thinking because it can feel so good to just think about things but and this is what i'm trying to say but why do i feel like i need to know everything now why can't i don't know be an acceptable answer why is it not an acceptable answer like it hasn't it's only been over a week now and i was literally pressurizing myself to have answers literally days after coming back and i'm just like why is it so hard to sit aimlessly with an unknown destination that's really my problem. Sitting aimlessly with an unknown destination. You can probably deduce that that is an extremely uncomfortable place to be for a person like me. So here I am talking like crazy to a camera, unloading, still with no answers. But I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing this for a reason. <sighs> the content that I've seen so far on existential crises and post-grad stuff has been very advice oriented. And that is super helpful for a person like me. Super helpful because I am rational and I am logical and I am analytical and I need systems and I need patterns and I need 
I need a framework and I need a template and I need answers. But then I'm like, thinking this past week, yeah, I've made a few moves, but that's not speeding up anything because like I say, time needs time. I love saying that. That's one of my favorite things, a favorite ideas that I've come up with. And maybe I'll make a whole video on this, but time needs time. And no matter how much I think, I can't rush time. So instead, what I'm going to do is I am going to feel this existential crisis and I am going to document this existential crisis because while you'll find a lot of videos on how to process an existential crisis, I want to show you how to feel an existential crisis because that is also, in my opinion, an important skill. So we are going to feel this existential crisis and when we get out of it, we get out of it. And that is that. That is that. I just, I don't know. I don't know what to, some days, I just wanna lay down and disappear. You know what I said to my dad the other day? So we went to a rural community in, in Peru, Pucahasa, and it probably wouldn't even take a dollar to live there. It was extremely frigid. And I am shivering at the thought of those temperatures because you know your girl gets cold here inside a home. And I thought I was Canadian, but girl, those people are, what what's his name? I don't know, but the Iceman, those people are literally the Iceman. What's the word? You know, embodied. Or not embodied is not the word that I'm looking for, but that's what we're going with for now. Whew. Anyways, I was literally telling my dad, it doesn't take even a dollar to live up there. Let me just go drop off the face of the earth and I will be happy. Okay, like seriously, I don't know what is happening with my life and I don't know what to do with my life but like I said we are going to feel this existential crisis and we will figure it out we will be okay okay we will be okay this is the best I have felt this past week girl you should have seen me and I'm contemplating posting it on TikTok but and I probably will because I made a TikTok the first day I was like, okay, Ruha, let's just clean our room. Like, come on. And it was, I think this past Monday, I was like, Ruha, like, come on. It's been a week. Let's just clean our room. Okay. So I think I'll post that on TikTok. Go check it out because that is, that's the real tea. Okay. That's not even the worst, but that's the real tea. I'll actually insert a video here of what my room looked like a few days later after coming back. You know, the state of my room is the state of my mind. So, yes. Yes. We are figuring stuff out. Here is to seeing Ruha a little bit disheveled. A little bit all over the place. But then, coming back to take over the world, okay? And I was talking to a friend the other day, and I think she's really helped me actually feel better because I genuinely felt better after talking to her and since then I've continuously felt better and she was telling me about how we are living seasons of our life right and this is the season that we're in and the best is yet to come that's what she said to me shout out to Annie Grace um, she said that this is the best has yet to come and if you had a good, great experience then and you're feeling the loss of it or you're feeling the loss of something and you feel like the best has already come, the best has yet to come. And there will be more experiences for you to enjoy and cherish and love. And so this is your season. And I guess this is my season. So just gonna try to navigate this from a place of gratitude and spirituality to be honest and see where that takes me with that until next time